Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Adventure Cast. It's the second episode. Today should be February 21st uh, when this posts. Uh, I'm the host, Chill the Beast, and I'm actually taking on today's episode alone. Like I mentioned, I do want to have guests on uh, episodes of the podcast, but I don't want every episode to be focused on a guest. Sometimes I just want to talk. Sometimes I just want to uh, chat it up. And I figure one of the things I can do when I don't have a guest on the show is I can have a like a kind of log of all the games that I played uh, for any given month. Uh, this will both include games that I played for the channel as well as games that I've played uh, on my own spare time. I can I can talk about what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them and and give you some links uh, in case you're interested in checking them out. Any game that I uh, was told I'm sorry any game that I was given a code that's what I was trying to say given a code to play on the channel I'll say it very at the beginning of the episode so in case you don't want to watch something where I've been uh, given a product to play for free uh, for press releases or things like that then you'll know immediately let me look at today's list today's list I don't think nah today's list I wasn't given any game to play on the channel some I went out and fouled on my own that's kind of like a promo thing because like sometimes I do like to uh, play games uh, that are new, very new, made by indies and have them showcase to uh, some people who think they may or may not have similar uh, interests in games to me. Uh, but none of the games from today's episode uh, of the podcast were given to me. It's all things that I found myself. Now, uh, since this is the first time I'm doing this, let's go ahead and Go ahead, excuse me, and add some restrictions to uh, what games I feature. So I'm not just throwing anything up there because there are some games that I, I do. I do play a lot of games and some of them I actually don't have an in-depth grasp on uh, the game. So my opinion, my opinion shouldn't say it's not important, but it's not as well tuned or fine tuned as it should be. So the very first restriction that I'm having is that any game that is played and then featured in this game log it's gonna be a monthly thing and in this monthly game log it has to be a game that i either played at least one hour of or i played it all the way i beat i beat the game i got to the ending not 100 but i got to the ending so that's the very first restriction that kills a lot of games that kills a lot of games from my monthly list because there are some games i only play for about 10 minutes 15 minutes when i'm featuring on the channel uh also this is not limited to video games this could be board games card games uh uh what else is there tabletop games this could be party games things like that i'm not uh i've, I've never really limited any when i say games i'm never really limited to video games because i play way more i play way more games that aren't video games than games there are over the course of any given month and finally uh no repeating games for three months uh, i can play them naturally i'm gonna play them uh but i won't bring them up here in the in the monthly game log so for example i'm doing both january and february today okay so anything i come up with in january can't come up until april anything that i mentioned in february can't come up until may sound solid to you hope so hope so okay so let's go ahead and get into uh january for january i played five games five games that i want to feature here on the channel the very first is gora 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 is a super interesting game like when i i've heard i've heard things about the game and people were like oh you like this and i took a look at it and i wasn't exactly sure uh it has a very interesting art style to it uh but what's really cool about it is its mechanic basically you're taking a look at a two by two window pane over the course of the game and you want to move those the, the images within the window panes so that you can make your way to the next part of the story. Um, the story is more or less this, this child is trying to... This is me interpreting it. This may not be the, the actual story, but this is why I interpret it from me because it doesn't, use, it doesn't use dialogue or text to communicate anything. This child is trying to locate five shapes that are that are apparently the symbol of this huge this huge snake, and I'm guessing the snake has has some mythos to it um, within the universe of the game. Uh, but you're trying to progress through the story of him finding the five shapes, and you do so by moving the the tiles that make up that two by two window pane 
And what's really cool is all the pieces interact with each other. So so you could tap on something that's in it and it'll zoom in, in one of the, the tiles and it'll zoom in on that. And then you can move that and then something happens. Uh, you, you go to move it and instead of the whole thing going with you, you split it into two. You've moved like an, a top layer and then there's still the bottom layer so that you have a completely different image. Like it's really, it's, it's genius. It is genuine genius. That, a game is short. I will say it's short. But I have never played a game like that that had me feeling like, oh, my God, the entire, entire time. And, and I'm like, I'm trying to solve the puzzle. I'm, I'm clicking and I'm clicking and I'm moving and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do, what I need to do. And I go to move something and something completely moved away. I didn't expect it to move the whole time. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, oh wow. This game is this game is great. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. This is something I played in my spare time. Like I said, the game is pretty short. I bought it one night and then I beat it. I had it beat by the next afternoon. I didn't play it consistently. Like I wasn't playing it endlessly until I beat it. But uh, it, it's it's short, but it's really fun. It's 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 value. The the shortness is its value. I feel like if the game would have gone on too long, I would have gotten frustrated. There there were a few parts. I will say there were a few parts where I got hung up. Uh, it it's and it, it's entirely not the game. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I couldn't think it through well enough to to solve the puzzle that was trying to present. And then after after I solved it, I was like, okay, this puzzle makes 100% sense. It's me. It's my fault. It's my fault. My brain wasn't tuned to this one. And that's okay. That's okay. Another game that I played in the month of January. This one also went on to February, this current month. Uh, Pathfinder Adventures. Pathfinder Adventures is a tabletop board game. Uh, it's based on the Pathfinder series, which is uh, a derivative of the Dungeons of Dragons uh, series tabletop game. Uh, effectively in this game what you want to do you're trying to complete different scenarios different levels uh, and you do so with cards and dice uh, you have the traditional six skills strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma and each of those are associated with a certain die based on how many i'm sorry based on how skilled you are in that level in that uh in that skill so like you have the 12 sided die this is this is a 12 sided die. Uh, it's not your traditional six sided die. And then there's the eight sided die. And we got 20 sides here. Where's where's 20? We got 20 here. 20 sided die. And then we also have a 10 sided die. And then a four sided die. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where we at? Where's where's my four sides? Oh, dropped it. Dropped it. Give me a second. Four sided. There we go. Four to side. Four sided die. Uh, use different dice to determine uh, whether or not you're successful at different things, like acquiring weapons or uh, getting items, getting allies on your side, and and defeating monsters. It's it's it's. I think. Let's see. Over over the past. Let's see. I bought those books. I bought those books in like 2009. Over the past almost 10 years, I think I've come to terms with the fact that D&D may not be for me. I might just not have run into a group of people that can help me with D&D, with playing D&D. But D&D may not be for me. Pathfinder Adventures, though, is a game that is very much for me because it's very simple to play. It's, it's a little, little tricky to understand your first time playing it. But once you got it down, uh, it's it's a bit it's a lot of fun. I played that on both our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the alt play, over on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash the alt play, as well as uh, with the instant replay live stream team over on twitch.tv slash instant replay live. That's a lot of playing uh, Pathfinders. Um, and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But I, I have it on the computer on steam i have it on my ipad so that like i could play on the go and i actually have the physical board game i have the the cards in the box and everything uh, i actually bought that first i bought the uh the physical board game first and then i got it on the ipad and all of that jazz it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun i think we're at this point we're in the fourth 
scenario, I think after this fourth one, I'm sorry, fourth adventure path. After this, we got we got two more to go, and we we've completed. I've actually never completed the entire game, so doing it on stream is actually a lot of fun for me. It's a lot of fun. Next up, uh, another game that we played on YouTube is uh, something to do with love. We actually played the demo last month. I'm sorry. Yeah, it went live in February, but I played it last month uh, in January. Uh, this is a it's I, I kind of want to call it a visual novel, but it's not a dating sum. It's not a dating sum. And it's it's illustrating or is detailing uh, this one character after he finds his person of interest at a party uh that they're all familiar with and he's hanging out with his friends and there's other people that you could talk to it's very visual novel-esque it's trying to get me into the world through narrative through story and and that's the whole gameplay there the catch is that everybody is animals <laughs> everybody's animals it is actually it's pretty interesting uh let's see i posted that episode on february 14th on uh valentine's day I think during the video I mentioned that it's supposed to come out sometime in March. Uh, but what happens is like the day after the day after the episode posted, I went and looked up more information on something to do with love itself, like the game. And it turns out that's not coming out until December of this year. So looks like we just go have to wait till December to play it again. It's OK. It'll be OK. Uh, it was also noted, someone noted on on a previous video on the channel, I believe it was on uh, the Something to Do With Love video, that uh, there was a performance update the day after I uploaded the demo as well. I love when that happens. <laughs> I love when that happens. But that game was, that game was really, it's, it's got... It's got pretty strong storytelling. Every character feels like their own, and not just like when I'm doing voices or things like that. Each character feels like an actual person instead of someone wrote this one and this character and this character and this character and they're slightly different but their conversation is more or less the same no they they all have their own feel and i like that i like that a lot i like that a lot <clears throat> next up in january i played a game called mole mania on the channel that was actually a game from my childhood i remember I remember playing that on the Game Boy Pocket. I, I used to have a, a thing that I hold like this, and I and I, I press some buttons. And when it got to be too late at night, it was time to stop playing. Not only because I was a kid, but because screens weren't backlit then, so you couldn't see it. It was impossible to see. Anyway, it is a puzzle. I want to call it a platform. It's not. Pl it's not a platform. It's a puzzle. It's a, definitely a puzzle game. And the whole idea is that you are a mole. I believe his name is Muddy. I mentioned his name was Monty during uh, the game. I mixed that up with Super Mario. It'll be all right. Like I said, I was like eight. <laughs> uh, you play as a mole named Muddy whose family gets kidnapped by the evil the evil farmer, Jinbi. I believe his name was Jinbi. Um, and it's your duty to go out and save your family. But what you have to do is you have to maneuver your way through puzzles using boulders and holes because, you know, moles like to dig using boulders and holes and, and taking care of enemies and things like that in order to recover your family who's been kidnapped by Jinbi. It's it's if 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 I were to uh, rank puzzle games, I would well by on difficulty, I would definitely say. That one's near the top. That one has to be on the top of somebody's list. Like, if we're talking top 100 difficult puzzle games, that's that's on the top. That's a very... That game was hard. <laughs> that game was hard. I struggled with it as a kid, and I thought picking it up, you know, as an adult, as a bandana-wearing adult, would be easy. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's no easier than when I was eight. <laughs> it is no easier. Uh, I mentioned that I want to come back and play that game if anyone was, was interested. I, I understand that people have been interested in checking it out. I've just been super busy with life. Like, I know you might not know this because uh, uh, I haven't talked about it on the channel, but I'm focusing on a move. I'm moving from my current location. So I got to figure out where I'm where I'm going to have the office, where 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 I'm going to be, where where I'm going to live, things like that. So that's been on my priority list. But eventually we will come back and we will save uh, Muddy's entire family. I believe we've saved three, three of their kids. I believe we saved three of their kids already. 
whatever, however many. We'll be all right. They'll be all right. All right. And then the last game that I want to talk about for January 2018 is Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. We, we were playing this one on stream. Let me talk to you guys about this game. Let me talk to you specifically about how I run uh, the channel, how I run alt play. The number one rule has always been if it's not fun anymore, don't do it. If you're not having fun, stop playing the game. Don't do it anymore. Figure out what needs to be fixed. Figure out why it's not fun. See if you can fix it and then play again. If not, that's okay. It'll be all right. Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, the very first stream, I was having fun. I was having fun. And then I realized when I went to go look at the video that we only did five puzzles. We only did five puzzles in that very first stream compared to the very first game. Oh, I'm sorry. Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box is the second game in the Professor Layton series. We did the first game on stream. We started that back in, I want to say, October, September, October, when those two sounds right, of last year. And then we picked up Professor Layton at the beginning of this year. Uh, compare those five puzzles in this second game in the first stream that we did to, like, I want to say about eight. Anywhere from eight to ten in the first game in our first stream. Same amount of time. We, took, we had the same amount of time to do it. Um, then the second stream, I picked it up, and we were stuck on the train uh, for the was the first chapter, I believe. We were stuck on the train for the entire three hours of that stream. And most of that time was walking back and forward because it wasn't clear where I was supposed to go. It, it, it wasn't clear where I was supposed to go, who I was supposed to talk to, and do things like that. Now, the third stream, the third stream, we continued walking back and forth. At that point, I was not having fun. And then we, we made our way to the village. We made our way to a village where we kept walking back and forth. Wasn't having fun. We weren't solving puzzles. Now, when we did get to solve puzzles in the second and third stream, they weren't puzzles. I have a problem with the term puzzle being used so loosely. I have a problem with the term puzzle being used so loosely. Because the term puzzle means that the solution is there the solution is not only there but it's 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 obvious you just got to understand the mechanics of the game so for example let's look back at Mo uh, mole mania real quick each each room is its own puzzle the solution is there it's obvious you just got to figure it out you might not have you might have to look at a signpost that'll give you a hint on how you need to solve this puzzle or you might not either way it's possible to solve this puzzle without Without, like, a ridiculous bit of outside information, you know? Now, back at Professor Layton, in the two, in the last two streets we did, there were, puzz there were puzzles that weren't fair. And they, and the majority of them came from Professor Layton. I already knew. I already knew because it was Professor Layton issuing out the puzzle as opposed to other characters like his, his, uh, his friend. Uh, what's his name? What's the little boy's name? I don't remember his name. Like, his, his sidekick. Uh, like the villagers Like the people on the train I already knew because it was Leighton giving out the puzzle It wasn't going to be fair It never is It had consistently has not been fair once In both games Up until what I played in the second one uh, It hasn't been fair once Those aren't puzzles Those are riddles It's a riddle when there's a trick Like for example Like for example What is it? The riddle where you're in a room And the only thing in this room with you is a mirror there are no doors. There are no windows. How do you escape? See, that's not a puzzle. That's a riddle because the answer, I don't know the whole answer. It's dumb. But the answer starts with you look in the mirror. You see yourself. You see what you saw. So you take the saw and you saw your way out. That's not a puzzle. That's not a puzzle. That's a riddle. That's not fair. And it, if, if that you now need extra information that you can use words to, to manipulate how to get out. That's not a riddle. I'm sorry. That's not a puzzle. That's a riddle. If you, the only thing in this in this this room with four walls, a ceiling, and a floor is you in a mirror, then you're stuck in that room. Traditionally, you're stuck in that room. If it's a riddle, though, you see what you saw and you saw your way out. That's that's not fair. So I realized two streams, two streams in a row. Now I'm not having fun. I'm not having fun with this game. Uh, the people in the stream with me. They're not having fun with this with the stream because it's it's and it's entirely not my fault because the the puzzles aren't puzzles uh, and even they can't solve this and figure it out 
Unless they knew the answer. They already played the game before and knew the answer or looked it up. I said, okay, I'm not playing this anymore. I'm not playing this anymore because I'm having fun. I might go on to the third game. I might. But this one here, I'm not having fun at all. So there we go. I'm dropping the game. I'm dropping the game. I've never rage quit a game live on the channel. But Lord have mercy, did I rage quit that one. <laughs> Professor Layton in the Diabolical well, Diabolical box gets a thumbs down for me. Thumbs down. I don't like it. I ain't liking it. I'm not with it. Not with it. All right. Let's move on to February's games. The games that I played in February 2018. Um, and what I'm actually going to do, I'm only going to do four games here. These games are actually super, super dope. Okay. So the first one, the first one that I've played on the channel is Battle Chef Brigade. Ladies and gentlemen. I have listen. I have I have friends I've grown up with, and we all we all talk from time to time, and we play games together, and like we all have a good idea of who likes what type of game, who likes to play what type of game, who doesn't mind watching the others play what type of game. And uh, my friends know that I don't. I typically don't smile when I play video games. I typically don't smile. Like I, I'll have fun, but I won't sit there with a big smile on my face. Like I, I understand because I'm playing. I'm playing the game. I'm in the zone. Um, Battle Chef Brigade is one of the games where I know my friends would be like, "I can't believe you're smiling right now." I have. I'm having so much fun playing that on the channel. Uh, it's actually uploading this week. This uh, this week where is the second week. Last week was the first week. That game is is it's it's amazing. I'll I'll say that that game is amazing. Um, you play the role of Mina. Oh, I'm playing I'm playing normal mode right now. I know this hard mode. I'm gonna assume that hard mode has a, a different story, either a different story or what what I like in narratives. Uh, telling the same story but from a, a different perspective um you play the role of mina as she becomes a battle chef she wants to be a battle chef which is something that has been let uh, uh i shouldn't say legend it's, it's a tradition that's taken place in this world i believe the world's v v varicia i might be mixing up like three different games um She's she wants to be a battle chef, so she leaves home to become a battle chef. And along the way, uh, she she gets in fights with other characters. It's so cool. This game is so cool. Now, what's cool about it is the game has you do match three, which if you play Bejeweled or uh, Candy Crush, things like that, you need to match three like shapes uh, in in a horizontal row or a a column, a vertical column. Uh, in order to match them, match the jewels and get points for them. Uh, but what's cool is you not just it's not just dropping pieces in. You have to go out and hunt the pieces. Uh, you hunt down monsters, wild monsters that are all around the land and use use their the, the meats and the leaves and all of that that they produce when they die. Uh, as ingredients for your concoction that you mix up in the match three. That is so genius. That is so genius. The game is so much fun. I've, I'm having so much fun. Like the game in the story. Oh, oh, I'm gushing right now. <laughs> and the story is pretty cool too. Um, the uh, I'm sorry, not the story. The art style. I already talked about the story. The art style is cool in that it's. It looks all hand drawn. I'm not entirely sure. I guess I could look that up right now, right quick. Battle 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 Chef Brigade hand drawn. I believe it's all hand drawn. Yes, yes. The art style is completely hand drawn. Victusia. Victusia is the land. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Um Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I want I actually want to see this game to the end. I want to see this game all the way to the end. And then potentially I want to come back and play hard. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I want to play hard mode on the channel or if that's just going to be for me. Uh, I wouldn't say the game's entirely difficult on normal, but it is a challenge. It definitely is a challenge, especially because like this is this is combining two different um, two different genres into one. So like it, it does have a good challenge to it. Uh, I might play I might play hard on the channel. I might play. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how I feel. <laughs> I'll figure out how I feel. 
Okay, the next game that I played in February is Oxygen Not Included. Uh, it is a game by, that's Clay Entertainment, right? I believe that's Clay. I, I, I like so much of Clay's games that I, I I typically want every game that I play to be a game by Clay. Yeah, it's Clay Entertainment. I should have known because it has it is more or less a, a very similar. I shouldn't say more or less. It's a very similar art style to uh, Don't Starve. O- Oxygen not included. Basically, you you are running uh, an underground facility. You're running an underground facility. It's a survival game, and you need to make sure all your people survive. You do that by getting them oxygen and food and water, things like that, Doing, giving them all the things that they need to stay alive in their colony. It's hard. This game is hard. Don't starve is hard like the first time you pick it up, obviously, because you don't know what to expect. But then by your third, fourth playthrough, you kind of have a grasp of it. And then playthrough number 10, perfect. You know what you're doing. You got this. You have a mission. You know how to play. Let's ride. I actually did not include it. I have I have not played this game clearly. I've clearly not played it enough because it is it is hard to keep people alive. I got people that keep drowning somehow. I got people that keep uh, getting asphyxiated. They run out of oxygen. Game is hard. I'm gonna get my life together and be good at it eventually. What I do like about it though is that they are they are quickly updating it. The game is in. Uh, What's it called? It's early access. It's in early access. And it's not often that I buy a game while it's in early access. But I know Clay. I know Clay Entertainment and their quality for games. I have no I have no qualms about putting my money on the line early to support them. Uh support them financially. Uh the game is difficult. And what they what they're doing is they're constantly updating. I believe the most recent ocu- I'm sorry, the most recent update up to this point is the occupational update basically you can focus on giving people jobs after they i believe it's after they've become so so well versed in doing things so for example if they if they do a lot of the digging then eventually you'll be able to give them a job that focuses on digging instead of just the role of digging when you tell them hey do this i need you to dig this up Uh, i assume the same thing is true about cooking uh, if you're the per- if you have the same person cook so often, prepare all the food so often, eventually they can become a chef or something like that. Uh, I honestly need to look more into it. The updates, to be very honest, the updates come so quickly that I don't have time to to keep up on what everything does. By the time I've remembered, hey, oxygen not included, just had an update. Uh, I should go look at it. Another updates come out, and now I have no idea, <laughs> and I have no idea uh, anything about it. Actually, not included, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm not going to do this often and where I talk about a video series that has not made its way onto the channel just yet. But I figure since it's coming out this Friday, it'll be coming out in two days. Now is the perfect time to talk about it. Since I guess since I got, I can give myself clearance to talk about it. On Friday, over the course of the entire day, every 30 minutes, I'm warning you guys now, every 30 minutes, a uh, video is going to go up where I'm playing Pikmin. Now, for those of you who don't know, Pikmin was one of the very first games on the GameCube, and it is one of the, I'll put this on my list right now, it's one of the most difficult games I've ever played in my life. What the game is, more or less, uh, a space a spaceship crash lands on a planet, and its pilot, Captain Olimar, uh, has to recover the, was it the 25, was it 25? ship parts how many how many parts of the ship yeah, all, several parts of the ship break off i believe it's it's 25 actually it's 30 isn't it 30 parts in 30 days yeah 30 30 ship parts um all fall off of his ship as it crash lands and he has 30 days to recover all 30 of the ship parts before his his life support system uh his spacesuit his oxygen just gives out otherwise he's stuck on the planet uh the game is nintendo hard that is a term used on older nintendo games because they were all really difficult like for example castlevania uh some people would say super mario uh super mario brothers excuse me it's nintendo hard only because they haven't figured out like a couple a lot of the tricks that make the game a breeze uh and then pikmin is also a nintendo hard game this game is difficult 
It's very time based. You have, like I said, you have 30 days. Each day takes about 12 minutes. I believe I clocked it at. Each day lasts about 12 minutes. Uh, Earth time, Earth time. Uh, so you don't have forever. You don't have forever to get all these ship parts. You you have to manage things. And what Alamar, the trick of the game is Alamar can't really get all the ship parts himself. They're too big. So what he does is he finds the life form that's native to the planet pikmin uh these tiny little creatures that grow out of the ground and he he's able to uh command them to carry all these parts or break down this wall and things like that uh so it's it's time management and resource management time being that you only have 12 minutes for 30 days uh to to go get all these ship parts and then resource management you got to make sure you keep the pikmin alive because uh there's monsters all above the ground that will eat your pikmin in the event that you are careless with them uh you only you only allowed so many pikmin at once so you got to be careful like i said the game is really hard uh that's all going up on friday i have it set on the channel so that the videos go up over the course of the day i don't want to bombard everybody with it all at once i'd rather it go up like an entire series like an interesting netflix series i've been talking about this in our discord for the longest uh, i said netflix series i'm doing it i got i got the perfect game for the netflix series I actually wanted to play Pikmin on the channel at least two years ago. I, I've narrowed it down. It was at least two years, excuse me, two years ago that I wanted to play uh, Pikmin on the channel. I just had two qualms about it. I, A, didn't think I'd be able to do well enough to have it be entertaining on the channel. And then B, I didn't, did I say one? Whatever. And then the second one is that I didn't, I didn't think I could find a way to put it up on the channel and not feel like I'm wasting people's time. I figured it out. Netflix series is the way to go. So everything's coming out all at once, all on one day. I hope you guys enjoy it. I had a lot of fun playing the game. I won't tell you whether or not I beat it, but I had a lot of fun playing the game. I almost played the entire game in one sitting. Uh, my butt got tired. If you want me to be perfectly honest with you, I got tired of sitting down. So I said, okay, I got I to gotta move. I got to move. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. And then the last game that we played, or I played, for the month of February is Dragon's Dogma. I'm trying to figure out the perfect way to describe it. I don't like looking up how to describe games because, you know, if I had fun, if I, if I had fun like I think I had fun, I should be able to describe it. It has a kind of MMO world feel to it. It feels like an MMO. It's absolutely not. It's a single player game. It's only one person playing this game. You're not online or anything. But it feels like an MMO world. And I think that's what I like the most about it. Uh, you have this huge world with towns and buildings that you can go in and interact with other people. But you're playing an adventure game in which uh, a dragon attacks the land and you try to stave it off. You being the fisherman that you are, try to stave the dragon off. But of course a dragon is going to be the fisherman uh, and the dragon takes your heart and you're brought back to life as what's called an arisen and now you want to go get vengeance go get your heart back against this dragon but uh you don't you're not traveling alone you have what's called pawns they're basically people or, or spirits they're not really people they're, i guess they're like spirits uh, and they're there to assist you. You can have three at the most. You can switch them in and out. I'm sorry. You can switch two of them in and out as you want. One of them is more or less your partner. That one's stuck with you for the entirety of the game. And there's different classes. There's rogues. Uh, I'm sorry. There's archers, mages, soldiers, things like that. I'm playing. I think I'm playing as a as an archer. Uh, my main weapon is are the daggers. And then my secondary is my bow. Uh, and that game's a lot of fun. What, like I said, it's it's got an MMO world feel in that you can travel all over the place. And what I, what I've always liked about MMOs is are their 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 openness. How how wild the world is. You want to go somewhere and do something? Sure, let's go do it. You want to go hunt stuff? Let's hunt stuff so that we can get all this material. What I disliked about MMOs, though, is completely not having to do with MMOs. Is the internet, uh, as the internet has grown, it has become a a wasteland of information. Anything that you want to know, it's on the internet somewhere. So if I want to figure out where I can get where I can get wool from, 
I don't I don't have I I can go out into the world and search for it, but the answer's out there somewhere. The answer's on the internet somewhere on where to find wool in this world. Uh, and in an MMO, you're typically playing with a lot of other people. So if you say, I, I'm looking for the wool, I don't really know where to find it. They're going to be like, oh, the answer's right here. You can find it here, 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 and here. And it's not that they might have found the information themselves. It's that they might have found it on the internet. I've I've always liked MMOs because if I wanted to explore the world and find something myself, I could do that. If you if you've been on the channel long enough, you know I don't like being I don't like being given the answer. I like to find the answer myself. I like to adventure for it. Adventure cast. I like to adventure for it and find the answer myself. I don't like the answer being given to me. And because Dragon's Dogma is a single player game, I I really don't have to worry about someone coming up in the chat and being like, "Hey, this is where you find this." This is this is that this is the optimal way to do this. I want to do it my way. I want to find it my way. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to? <laughs> All right, guys, that's gonna be the adventure cast for this week. Uh, if you guys want to stay connected with me, it's a very simple way to do. You can subscribe to a YouTube channel. There's a red button below here. You can check that out. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the alt play. I'm streaming there. I stream over there, over on the lovely old Twitch. And then you can also join our Discord. The link to that, as well as all the other links, are in the description below. So if you're interested in talking more with me or other adventurers, we I bring up discussions from time to time in the Discord. Uh, you, you can you can do that there. Thank you guys for checking out the podcast. Next week I should have a guest. I'm trying to not have me do my own thing back to back so next week we should have a guest no promises though I'll, let, I'll keep you guys informed thank you for checking out the adventure podcast and i'll check you guys next week have a good one